explainable AI methods can be used to explain complex machine learning models, but they are not a golden bullet. You can't simply fire them at black box models and expect reasonable explanations for the inner workings, yet they can still provide incredible insight if used correctly. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. In this video, we will give 10 tips for getting the most out of XAI methods. The tips are roughly divided into three groups. The first four focus on the underlying data used to train models. The next four focus on you as a user of XAI methods. The last two delve into technical considerations. If you take one point away from all of these, it should be that XAI is about more than applying modeling methodologies or model agnostic methods. That is, successfully applying XAI lies not only in the algorithms, but also in your ability to navigate the intricacies of data interpretation and communication. If you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course where I give an introduction to XAI, teach you to build interpretable models, and go into depth on the theory and Python code for model agnostic methods, including LIME, SHAP, PDPs, ICEplots, ALEs, and Friedman's H statistic. Domain knowledge is the understanding of the specific problem or field to which machine learning is being applied. If you work in a bank, semiconductor manufacturer, or hospital, it is your knowledge of that particular industry. We can also think of domain knowledge as a collective understanding. Often in data science, we have to rely on the expertise of colleagues and other professionals. Incorporating all this knowledge in every step of the modeling process is essential for building interpretable models. This is because XAI is not just about data scientists understanding their models. It is also about explaining models to non-technical colleagues or even customers. It is often necessary to build trust in a model. Otherwise, it will not be put into production. We do this through narratives or stories about why certain features are predictive. These relate the relationships captured by a model to the domain knowledge of the project's stakeholders. If we build and select features with domain knowledge, there will already be strong justification for why the features are predictive. We already have the stories. Explaining the model becomes a matter of explaining how the relationships are represented in the model. Considering the next two points will make this process even easier. There are many ways to capture underlying relationships in your data. Some will be easier to explain or align closer with the stories given by domain knowledge. For example, suppose we want to predict the price of a second-hand car. A predictive feature could be the time taken to travel a fixed distance. We could expect a negative relationship with price, and it may not be that difficult to explain. Yet, if we take the inverse of the feature, we get average speed. This has a more intuitive explanation. There can be multiple ways to capture the same underlying relationship through feature engineering. Nonlinear relationships could be captured with polynomial terms or through discretization. Interactions can be captured using the ratio of the features or by multiplying them together. As just mentioned, even linear relationships can be reformulated. We should always aim to capture relationships in an intuitive way, as it will make the final model easier to explain. Once we have a set of potential features, it is tempting to throw them all at the model. Why not let it figure out which ones are the best? If we are using models like XGBoost or a random forest, you can do this and still get a reasonable accuracy. These models can handle fairly large sets of features, yet the final model will be far more difficult to explain than if you had put thought into feature selection along the way. This is due to multicollinearity. A multicollinearity or feature dependency is when two model features are not independent. Instead, 
The features are associated so that when one feature changes, the value of the other also changes. Multicollinearity can wreak havoc on the results of XAI methods. In fact, the only method that comes that I've come across that is robust against them is ALEs. Using methods like SHAP, LIME, PDPs, and ICE plots can all lead to incorrect conclusions if your features are not independent. Another important aspect is they make the underlying relationships captured by the model harder to explain. If you're predicting the price of a house, the number of bedrooms, the floor size in square meters, or the property's perimeters may all be predictive. Yet, they all measure roughly the same thing, the size of the house. If we include all features, the underlying relationship between size and price will not be clear. Following these points, one of the best things you can do for interpretability is start with a simple model, either linear or logistic regression. For many use cases, a well-structured linear model will not be outperformed by more complex models. At the same time, they are intrinsically interpretable. In many industries, they're also widely understood and accepted. This all makes them far easier to explain. Starting with a simple model also forces you to take the above points more seriously. To build a good linear model, you need to be more careful about the way you select features. You also need to rely more on domain knowledge to engineer those features in the first place. Even if you decide to use a nonlinear model, this process will provide valuable insight into your data and features. Ultimately, make it easier to explain any model. Understanding a model as a data scientist is only the beginning. As mentioned, you will often be expected to explain that model or a decision based on that model. Whether it's to a colleague with solid domain knowledge but no ML knowledge, or a customer with neither, your audience's expertise will vary. What information you present and how you present it should change to match that expertise. When dealing with colleagues, they may want a full explanation of all model features. At the same time, you may have to avoid statistical jargon. Customers may only expect key drivers of a decision, and you'll have to avoid both statistical and business jargon. With customers, you also have to worry about the way you phrase your explanation. Your loan application was rejected because we are uncertain that you will be able to make your monthly repayments. Sounds a lot better than because you don't make enough money. Causal inference is the process of finding the true cause of an event or target. When interpreting a model, even if it is intrinsically interpretable, you're not doing causal inference. Interpretations involve understanding how a model makes predictions. These predictions can be incorrect. Even if the model is 100% accurate, it could be using proxy variables. This means the features used in the model will not necessarily represent the true causes of an event. The point is to be cautious about the way you use the knowledge from interpretations. There should always be a clear distinction between model interpretations and the true underlying causes. Sure, results from models can provide evidence towards a conclusion about causality, but they should not be taken as definitive evidence. To find that, we need to do some causal inference. As a data scientist, you are the person responsible for providing reliable information based on data that will support a decision. Yet, when interpreting models, it is easy to dump, jump to conclusions that align with our expectations. The charts based on XAI methods open to interpretation. Some methods, such as LIME, can even be manipulated into giving us certain conclusions. So to avoid going from DS to BS, we have to be aware of our bias and how it can impact our conclusions. In particular, we should be aware of confirmation bias. This is the tendency to search for, interpret, favor, and recall information in a way that confirms or supports one's prior beliefs or values. Going into a model build, we will all have our own ideas about what will be predictive or what results to expect. When working in an organization, you will deal with multiple stakeholders 
whether it's a manager that wants to get a model of the line or a business lead who wants to sell more insurance. They will all put pressure on certain conclusions. We can't let this push us away from the truth in the data. One way to avoid confirmation bias is to use multiple XAI methods. This is why in my course, we cover six model agnostic approaches. They will all have their own weaknesses and limitations. Yet, if the conclusions we can draw from multiple approaches all align, you can be more certain about that conclusion. We can further validate any conclusions using exploratory data analysis. This involves using different aggregations and visualizations to demonstrate trends in the data. The goal is to show that a relationship captured by the model exists in the underlying data. This way, we can be more certain that the XAI results are not due to statistical anomalies or overfitting. Okay, I realize that this one probably contradicts the above point. SHAP is the most powerful Python package for understanding and explaining your models. If you're only going to use one method, it is the way to go. This is why I dedicate an entire course to this method. For even better results, you should try to use the TreeShap algorithm. Both TreeShap and KernelShap are used by the package to approximate SHAP values. TreeShap is significantly faster, but a downside is that it is not model agnostic. It can only be used with tree-based algorithms like XGBoost, Random Forest, or CatBoost. If you want to explore your data using nonlinear models, it is a good idea to combine one of these with TreeShap. It will make it much faster to make model iterations and get insight into your data. The last bit of technical advice is to consider the limitations of the XAI packages themselves. All the methods we discuss are model agnostic in theory. This does not mean they are model agnostic in practice. Many of the approaches are new. ALEs were developed in 2020. Most have been generously implemented by small teams of researchers or data scientists. This means the methods will not work with all modeling packages. Another consequence is that Python dependencies can be a major source of problems when applying the methods. It is the most common type of problem people comment on my videos. The teams behind the packages do not necessarily have the time to update them or solve all the issues immediately. When installing packages, be aware that they may not work with your current version of Python or versions of common packages like NumPy, Matplotlib, or Seaborn. Embrace the struggle. As the community matures, these tools will become more reliable. To repeat, XAI is about more than these technical considerations. It is about the underlying data, how you capture that in a model, and communicate results. But what do you think? Do you agree with these tips? Or is there something important I've left out? Let me know in the comments. If you do want hands-on experience with one method in particular, SHAP, then check out this coding tutorial. Otherwise, you can find loads more XAI content in this playlist. Also, remember, you can get free access to my XAI course. 